Would you please stand with me as we welcome the Renaissance High School class of 2020. But as as you remain standing at this time, we will honor America with the singing of our national anthem. Renaissance student Maddie Schonholz will be singing the national anthem for us. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave Beautiful, beautiful job, Maddie, thank you. Uh, and you may be seated, family. Seniors, at this time, you may come and find your family members and have a seat with them. As the seniors make their way, 
And as I've taken off my mask, I want to remind you to keep yours on. Please respect the, the mask requirement throughout this ceremony as well as the social distancing. We were able to pull off this live graduation with some, some guidelines and we certainly wanna honor that and respect the decision makers to allow us to have this fine evening together under one roof. Well, here we are. A few weeks later than we had anticipated, but we made it. And I think that's wonderful. As you guys were walking in, I remember that you about four years ago chose Renaissance because you wanted a different education experience. You wanted to be able to use some of your creativity and technology knowledge in a different way than a traditional school setting. So we partnered with you to make that a reality for the last four years, thinking outside the box and doing things a little different. So we thought it would be perfectly fitting to have a commencement service outside the box and non-traditional, right? So we're, we've got the mask on and with social distancing. And Renaissance is really cool with all this. I know the other schools may be a little anxious and nervous that it's non-traditional, but hey, that's just how we roll, right? That's it. Now, that'll be our secret. We don't want superintendent or board members to find out about that, but that'll be our secret. My name is Kevin Green, and I'm the school, one of the school counselors at Renaissance, and it is my privilege on behalf of the administration and the faculty and the staff to welcome you to the sixth graduation ceremony of Renaissance High School. We are so excited, we really are, to be able to pull this off for you and to make this a reality for you. Uh, a little shaky time there back in May, we weren't sure, but uh, we're so glad that you were able to join us this evening. So if you're a graduate or a parent or grandparents or family or friends, welcome. We are so glad you're here to share in this this evening. At this time, I wanna take a few minutes just to recognize some special groups that are in attendance with us. We have Superintendent of Williamson County Schools, Mr. Jason Golden is here. Thank you, Mr. Golden. We have Williamson County School board members, Nancy Garrett, Casey Hall, and Eric Welch that are in attendance. If you guys would stand. Thank you guys for being here. I was visiting with a couple of you before and you look a little more tired than you usually do at commencement ceremonies, but we do thank you for your hard work and extra overtime hours you've been putting in to ensure we can start school in a reasonable way and in a safe way. So, so thank you very much. We also wanna thank the WCTV, the Williamson County TV team, including Stephen Chester, who is live streaming our graduation for us this evening through the WCS Facebook page for the entire Renaissance community to enjoy. So thank you, the WCTV crew that's up in the balcony. Thank you, guys. And certainly, a few more groups we want to recognize this time. We wanna thank the men and women who are serving our country and keeping us safe. It's very appropriate at a gathering like this that we just acknowledge that that's happening and that we show due respect to those men and women. If you're with us tonight and you're an active or former member of any of the armed services, would you please stand so you can be recognized specifically? Anyone here? Thank you, thank you for your service, and thank you to all the men and women who are currently serving both here and abroad. We also want to recognize the men and women who are currently serving our local communities in the role of first responders. Uh, that's such a vital role in our society now more than ever. If you are a police officer, firefighter, EMT, or any other frontline um, First responder, would you please stand and allow us to recognize your service at this time? Do we have any of those with us? Good. <laughs> Traditional calls to, to homes and are, are very much different now and very much out of the box. So we do thank you for your service. 
Now more than ever, we, we recognize this, the sacrifice and service of our frontline medical community. Um, I was in the hospital with my mother just last week, and I have a whole new respect for the nurses and doctors that are serving on the front line. If you are currently a nurse, doctor, or frontline medical person, we want to recognize you at this time. Would you please stand? A couple back here. Thank you. We do thank you for all the incredible amount of time you spent, especially over the last few months. You are serving your community so well, and we thank you. Though we at Renaissance are small in number, we are very blessed to have an active PTO, our parent-teacher organization. We thank you for all of the things you do to make our school run smoothly and to support our faculty and staff. You are invaluable to the programs we offer and to the Renaissance community. If you are currently part of the Renaissance PTO, would you please stand? Thank you, and especially to Ms. Charlie for serving as our, our PTO president who goes far and beyond the call. Thank you. And she may or may not have a favorite senior graduating tonight. I'm gonna to introduce Dr. Brian Bass. Dr. Bass has been at Renaissance for I believe seven years now and uh, does such a great job leading our school. He always has the great balance of meeting the academic rigor with the creative innovations and technology. And the, the thing I would say I like best about Dr. Bass is his, his ability to build community with all of our students. That's very high on the priority list. You're coming from different schools, different communities all over the county, and we're trying to make one cohesive community, and that's always an emphasis with Dr. Bass, and it's something I really appreciate. So at this time, we want to welcome Dr. Brian Bass. We're finally here. And what an unforgettable, surreal journey it's been. We want to focus our precious time we have tonight together on our graduating seniors. So I'm just going to share some opening thoughts instead of my customary full speech or singing performance or what have you. And then, as I say in Congress, I'm going to yield the rest of my time to Mrs. Joy Patton, who will later share a keynote message. Since she is leaving the classroom after teaching senior English for seven years here at Renaissance to take on a district instructional coaching role. First, I want to thank the people who made this night possible. First, thank you to Mr. Golden and his central office team. as well as to our board members for their tireless leadership, especially over these last few months, and their willingness to allow this makeup graduation to take place. Thank you. We couldn't have done this without the Renaissance staff who have volunteered countless hours behind the scenes and in Zoom meetings and more Zoom meetings and more Zoom meetings and in person leading up to this week, preparing for both our virtual graduation we had a few months ago and this live ceremony tonight. I also wanna thank my friends here at Fourth Avenue Church for being such gracious and accommodating hosts. Very flexible, uh, we had to change the date a couple times and they, were, they just said whatever we can do to help, we're here to serve. Finally, thank you to you parents for being so flexible and understanding over the past few months as we've had to try to figure out what we were gonna do, how we were gonna do it. And then also for your unwavering support of the senior sitting next to you who made the decision to take the road less traveled and come to Renaissance and out of zone school 
which I know took a lot of sacrifice on your part. So thank you for allowing your child to be here today. That brings me to our seniors. It's so good to see you all again and give you the closure and recognition you deserve after experiencing such an unprecedented, abrupt halt to your senior year. I can only imagine how hard it was as the weeks went on last spring to realize you were gonna miss prom, your last coffee houses, your senior toasts, your chance to produce and showcase your senior album, and just the overall experience of counting down the days to exams and graduation with your teachers and friends as that weather warmed up in the spring. As a member of the class of 2020, you will forever be associated with a global pandemic, an economic collapse, nationwide racial tensions and protests, and the year's only half over. As your principal, I therefore felt there was like an additional responsibility or expectation that I pass on some extra pithy words of wisdom or inspiration that you can lean on as you transition from the safe confines of Renaissance community to this real world. Honestly, I, I struggled with this, even though I was given an extra three months to think about it. Maybe because I first, I didn't even know if this graduation was gonna happen. Then one day last week, I'm alone at Renaissance, and I'm heading downstairs, the south stairwell, and I realized that the senior class had clairvoyantly shared better advice than I could ever come up with on my own. See, I was walking down the south staircase at Renaissance to the basement to get a cup of coffee, and I just stopped and stared at this mural behind me on the left. That two of our graduating seniors, Skylar Strand and Katina Ingram, painted their sophomore year. <laughs> for their fall semester iLab project in 2017. So, for those who can't see, this scene was inspired from Homer's The Odyssey and includes the following quote from the epic Take courage, my heart you have been through worse than this. And it came flooding back to me that the fall of 2017 was the most difficult semester I and Renaissance High School has ever experienced. Because as a class, as sophomores, they lost a beloved classmate when Eddie Wall tragically and unexpectedly died barely a month into the school year. Eddie would have been an 18-year-old senior sitting here tonight with his family on graduation night. We will never forget his love of music and that contagious, huge smile that completely lit up the room. We are so honored his parents, Jennifer and Alan, as well as other family members, have joined us tonight for graduation and these flower arrangements on the stage are in memory of Eddie. So I got my coffee, walked through the basement and was heading up the north staircase when I stopped and looked again with fresh eyes at the mural that four other seniors from the class of 2020, Claudia Jenkins, Emily Lacey, Viviana Torres, and Tina Garcia, painted for their iLab project last year when they were juniors. In case you can't see, this beautiful painting was inspired by these lines of a Maya Angelou poem. Just like moons and like suns, with the certainty of tides, just like hopes springing high, still I'll rise. So I have two closing thoughts about these two murals, which truly appear to be prophetic 
in retrospect when viewed against the backdrop of all we've been through these past four months. First, I believe these words capture the indomitable resilience, strength, and spirit of the Renaissance High School class of 2020. It's how I'm going to remember you. And I'll be reminded of you every time I walk downstairs and get a cup of coffee. Second, and finally, I'm really glad this graduation is being live streamed tonight. And it'll be posted on our Renaissance High YouTube channel over the next few days. Because I think our community, our country, and many parts of the world would find solace and hope in your messages of strength. Take courage, my heart. We have been through worse than this. Just like moons and like suns, with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still we will rise. So class of 2020, we are here to celebrate you tonight, but you clearly don't need my advice nor anyone else's on where you need to go from here. You're ready. You got this. Thank you for inspiring me, and I will miss you all dearly. Thank you. goes along with the mask, right? Thank you, Dr. Bass, uh, for your words. This year we have three students that have achieved the title of salutatorian. Claudia Jenkins, Emily Lacey, and Zach Sarabi. Will the three of you please stand so we can recognize you? Congratulations. And Emily, if you'll be making your way to the stage. At this time, we're gonna welcome salutatorium Ms. Emily Lacey, who's gonna share some thoughts to the senior class of 2020. Aside from the small class sizes and unique learning experience that Renaissance gives its students, what attracted me to this school four years ago was the fresh start that it allowed us all to have. This school gave me and my peers a blank slate which we were encouraged to use to become the very best versions of ourselves that we could. We were encouraged to be unabashedly ourselves, make mistakes, and to learn from them with deep understanding. As I reflect on my years at Renaissance, a phrase comes to mind that encompasses my experience here. We watched a motivational video in our advisory classes a couple of times that repeated the mantra, finished, not perfect. These three words resonated with me the first time I heard them, I think it was my sophomore year, but it wasn't until recently that I fully understood the true gravity of that phrase. The message behind the video is that it's more important to make something and complete it than it is for it to be perfect, because if you're just striving for perfection, it'll never be done. At Renaissance, we are given the space and support to try new things and to make mistakes. I'm so honored to be walking with this group of entirely unique individuals. We have grown together as a family through the years that we've spent together, and we've made mistakes and we've had the chance to grow from them. And now we have the opportunity to go on and continue making mistakes and growing from those. Don't be afraid to fail in the name of doing something bold. And now that we are continuing on to the next chapters of our lives, consider it a fresh start and a clean slate. And remember that we all finished this chapter. It wasn't perfect, but it's finished.
Great job, Emily. Zach, if you'll be making your way. Thank you, Emily. And at this time, please welcome salutatorian, Mr. Zach Sarabi. Dr. Bass, Dr. Gupton, faculty, parents, and last but not least, class of 2020. Thank you for this opportunity to speak at such an important event. For many of us, the idea of a typical public high school is terrifying, and up until ninth grade, I was homeschooled, which amplified this feeling. I remember arriving for my interview and being tasked with writing a paragraph. And as embarrassing as this may sound, I wasn't sure how to structure a paragraph. You can ask Dr. Green about my horrendous grammar in freshman year. After constructing an abomination of a paragraph, I had a group interview with Ms. Shrewsbury, who most of you know, Dr. Bass, and fellow students. One vivid memory of this interview was that I stated how I often fell into the background. And shortly afterward, I was nearly skipped during a question. Many of you know, however, that this school has helped me become anything but a background character. Renaissance High promotes itself as an innovative school. But what is innovation? For the individual, it's about undergrowing growth, something that all of us have experienced throughout these years. Although I could mention Innovation Lab, Coffee House, or the academies, our class has a much more defining story. We are the last class to have any exposure to what middle college was. We established many of the clubs students see today. We helped students access more rigorous courses. We abolished Lunch Bunch. We redefined the academies and graduation recognition. We innovated Renaissance. No individual could do this alone, but together we did it. That collaboration is something we all learned by being Renaissance students. Socrates once said, the secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but building on the new. As we all prepare to leave our cocoon, we must come to terms with our past and focus on our future. We're all going to be different people than who we are today, but we'll all maintain the innovative Renaissance mindset. Our abnormal closing of this chapter in our life makes these goodbyes even harder to say. Months of interactions we thought we had left abruptly ripped away. Whether it's saying goodbye to faculty who defined who we are or saying goodbye to these final days of our childhood, everyone is left uneasy by our inability to say goodbye the way we wanted. Even students prepared for graduation will still feel some pain. Try to look fondly on these years and what you've learned from them instead of repressing them. Celebrate endings for they precede new beginnings. Thank you all for your time. Great job, Zach, thank you. I want to introduce a group of students that's gonna come and, and present an original music, um, original music piece. So if you guys will be making your way up to the stage. I want to introduce Fiona Wascom, Sammy Reed, Bryn Jones, and Tegan Behan for a musical tribute for the class of 2020. The song is Clean Break, Clean Break. And the song they're performing tonight is an original song co-written by Bryn, Sammy, and Fiona in this year's inaugural Media Art Songwriting Course. It's our first ever songwriting course at Renaissance taught by, and taught by our very own teacher, John Henderson. So we thank Mr. Henderson for joining us at Renaissance for this year. I know his algebra classes were probably not as fun as the songwriting class, but uh, he did such a great job. So, guys, it's all yours. I'm nervous, I'm breathless. I can't escape this sinking feeling I'm not ready to be alone I'm hiding, I'm stalling I don't know where my life is going I'm not ready to be alone It's 
not a clean break A shatters at your feet It's not a clean break Clean breaks are easy to leave Just take a deep breath We'll figure this out It's not a clean break I've lived here, I loved here, I left and lost and found myself here. It's not easy to leave home. It doesn't feel right to leave this, to leave behind all of the faces of people I learned to love. Clean break shatters at your feet. It's not a clean break. Clean breaks are easy to leave. Just take a deep breath. We'll figure this out. It's not a clean break. a clean Great job, guys. I, I would say two things about that group. Mr. Henderson's classroom is across the hall from my office. And so what a, what a neat thing, what a joy it was every day during seventh period, the songwriting classes in there, they'll be playing the keyboard and playing the guitars and singing. So it's a pretty neat uh, part of my day. The second thing I would say is, I heard that song for the first time back in November, and after hearing it uh, like 200 times now, what? Excellent job. You guys have come a long way from, from, when that first, from when that first cut was made back in November, right? Good job. The class of 2020 has two students that have earned the title of valedictorian, and that is Bryn Jones and Meryl Smetana. Bryn, if you'll be making your way back to the stage. Please welcome class of 2020 valedictorian, Miss Bryn Jones. Thank you. 
I had a very difficult time figuring out what to write for this speech. A lot happened these last four years, and I really wanted to make it sure I did it right. After all, this place not only did a lot for me, but for just about everyone here in this audience. No pressure, right? <laughs> Looking back at the last four years that I've been here, and the last six years that Renaissance has been around, and even the last 17 and 18 years that contributed to all of us going here and being the people that we are, I wanted to ask myself, what is Renaissance? Is Renaissance the building? As Dr. Bass has aptly put it during several different fire drills, no. Is it the focus on arts, academics, group projects, or any of the four Cs? Again, I would say no. I don't even think that Renaissance is the teachers or students, although I could never thank the teachers enough for everything they've done for us, or my classmates for going through this with me. I think, when it comes down to it, Renaissance is exactly what the name suggests, rebirth and growth. Renaissance, at its core, is the ideology of change and creation that just about everyone here subscribes to. It's okay to be different here and weird, people will accept you. You can start out one person and be like three different people along the way and end up a completely different one, and that's all right. When I was in eighth grade, I was blonde, I had braces, and I was very emo. <laughs> the day before school started, I dyed my hair red and I got my braces off, and I was beyond nervous and excited for what was to come. Sophomore year, to use a colloquialism, I was a token feminist. And junior year, I was an artsy and loud songwriter. And I hope that today that I am a weird but wiser amalgamation of all of those things. There's a little bit of everything here and a little bit of ourselves that we've all left behind. And I think that's one of the things I'll miss most about this place. As I applied to colleges, I was reminded of when I applied to Renaissance. Those nine 75 word essays, the, the interviews and the tours prepared me more for this process than I was expecting it to. As I looked back at the essays, I was reminded of who I used to be and also who I still am four years from when I wrote them. I talked of writing short stories and dyed hair and emotional cleaning and my inability to do Algebra one. I talked about individuality being like a blue butterfly in a field of moths and how school felt like black and white text in a book and trying to live in the gray annotations and how I hoped at Renaissance I could throw at that book altogether. I talked about conformity and authenticity in every word except for them because it was here that I got to find out what they meant for me. I actually think I might have been more excited when I got into Renaissance than Vanderbilt. It made me realize how many things have changed and how many things have stayed the same and how eternally grateful I am for this place. The class of 2020 has gone through a lot together. Would we all say that there's been times that we've known more about each other than we wanted or needed to know? Probably. <laughs> we started this a bunch of kids just shoved together from all over the county in home schools, and we ended up being the people that we are today. I don't think that could have happened anywhere else. And although I know that the class of 2020 all over the world has a shared experience at the end of our senior year, I also know that if anyone can get through it, it's us. Although today is a happy day, it's also a very bittersweet one. I know personally that as excited as I am to start this next phase of my life, there's a pin in my chest knowing that it means that this phase, with all of you, is coming to a close. If I can say one parting piece of advice to my classmates, it would be to take your growth, take your confidence, your creativity, your weirdness, and your authenticity that you were able to cultivate at Renaissance and keep building. If most people had the type of foundation that we were able to get here, the world would be a much better place. Um, also, another piece of advice that many of you have probably heard me say at one point or another, go vote. So Renaissance, thanks for helping us grow. Now, because it's Renaissance and the speech is about growth, I have a quote and a lyric to share with all of you. From the amazing Maya Angelou, who was mentioned earlier in this, um, if you're always trying to be normal, you will never know how amazing you can be. And on another very different note, in the immortal words of Alice Cooper, school's out. Thank you, guys. Great job, Bryn. Thank you. Very talented young lady. Meryl? And at this time, we want to welcome Ms. Meryl Smetana, our class of 2020 valedictorian. Smetana. 
Smetana. She always corrects me on those. Hello, class of 2020. It is an honor to be given the opportunity to give this speech. So the first thing I would like to do is thank you and everyone else in attendance for your time. The second thing I would like to do is say congratulations. We did it, we graduated. <laughs> While we celebrate, I wanted to take some time to reflect. I struggled a lot during my freshman year. I had always been a bit of an overachiever when it came to school, but my struggles with mental health soon made it impossible to live up to the high standards I set for myself. I ended up missing a lot of school and getting really behind in my classes. I distinctly remember sitting on my parents' bed, looking at my grades, and just crying. I said to my mom, now I'm never gonna be valedictorian. <laughs> looking back on it, it's kind of wild that that was what I was most worried about. <laughs> I was a freshman with 72 missing assignments in Skyward, and I was sad because I was sure I wasn't gonna be the valedictorian of my graduating class. I eventually made it back to school and managed to finish my freshman year. This was in no small part thanks to our amazing counselors and teachers who were willing to work with me to find a way to still succeed in their courses after missing so much instruction time. I truly would not be up here without their help. Their words of encouragement helped me to believe that I could do what I needed to do to finish the year and understand that the world would not end if I got a B. Back then, even after I finished my freshman year, I was afraid that my goals and aspirations for my future could not be achieved because of my struggle with depression and anxiety. Standing up here today, for me, means proving that fear wrong. Yes, I still have an anxiety disorder and chronic clinical depression that I will likely deal with for the rest of my life, but I know that with proper treatment and people to lean on, they won't hold me back from achieving my goals. <laughs> As we move away from high school and begin the rest of our lives, we will all face setbacks and struggles. We will probably also all face self-doubt and a fear of not being able to achieve our goals and dreams. After going through high school with you, I know without a doubt that every single person in the class of 2020 is capable of doing amazing things. So here's to growing up, following our dreams, and proving our fears wrong. And if I may, I'd like to close out with a little bit of Taylor Swift in honor of Dr. Green. <laughs> Long live all the mountains we moved. I had the time of my life fighting dragons with you. I was screaming, long live the look on your face and bring on all the pretenders. One day, we will be remembered. Thank you. Great job, Meryl, thank you. I now want to introduce Dr. Chris Gupton who's going to come and share some accomplish, accomplishments of our graduating seniors. Uh, we're very proud of these guys, uh, especially academically, and she's going to share some of that with us. Dr. Gupton was a, a teacher at Renaissance for, for a few years, left us for central office, and came back this year in the role of assistant principal and has adjusted that role so well with all of the interesting things that was happening in 2020. So please welcome Dr. Christine Gupton. I thought maybe if I didn't follow Dr. Bass, I wouldn't have to adjust it, but apparently even so. I get the distinct privilege now of sharing with you some of the accomplishments of this class. But before I do, I want to tell the graduates that we are proud of each and every one of you, the challenges you've overcome to be sitting where you're at tonight. As a group, this class has earned $1.7 million towards their tuition next fall. We're gonna honor some of the other academic successes of our students. National Merit Finalist. Each year, approximately 1.6 million of the best and brightest students around the nation compete in the National Merit Scholarship Program. 
This year, 15,000 of those students progressed all the way to finalist. Our very own Miss Meryl Smetana is a National Merit finalist. This year, WCS is recognizing students whose academic achievement is reflected in their GPAs instead of using ranking using the traditional Latin system. Cum laude, with a GPA of 3.75 to 3.99. Please stand and be recognized. Magna cum laude, with a GPA of 4.0 to 4.24, please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Summa cum laude, with a GPA of 4.25 or higher. Where is it? He didn't show up. You'll notice that many of our graduates are wearing cords as part of their commencement regalia. We want to recognize those seniors at this time. The gold cord indicates students who are graduating with a Tennessee Diploma Honors. This means that they have met the college and career benchmarks on all four sections of the ACT. Please stand and be recognized. The silver cord indicates students who are graduating with a Tennessee diploma with distinction. It means they maintained at least a B average throughout high school, as well as achieving a major academic achievement such as a 31 or above on the ACT or 12 college credits at graduation. If you have the silver cord, please stand. The purple cord recognizes students who have earned um, service through their community by providing 10 or more service hours each semester. If you have a purple cord, please be recognized. The blue cord represent students who are members of our thespian society. These students have contributed greatly to the theater program at Renaissance. If you are wearing the blue thespian cord, would you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> athletic scholarship. To my understanding, we have exactly one student this year and probably one student ever who has earned a collegiate uh, athletic scholarship. Ms. Hope Dyson will be headed to TSU. where she will be continuing to show off her track and field skills. One more hand for Hope Dyson, please. <laughs> Mr. Sebastian Rombo is not with us today at his own high school graduation. That's because he is already at Paris Island at boot camp. His dad reported earlier this week that he was extremely bored through two weeks of quarantine, but he has now started boot camp, and I can attest he is bored no more. <laughs> Thank you to Sebastian for his commitment to serve our country in the United States Marine Corps. We have a tradition here that predates even Renaissance. At middle college, they started to give each senior a simple rock at graduation to remind them of the connection they had to the whole high school experience. 
As a class and as a community, we have shared many common experiences that connect us in unique and important ways. The rock is a symbol of that connection and the strength that it be brings. We encourage students to hold on to their rock, slip it in their pocket, and carry it with them. Use it the way one former graduate says he did when he was serving in Iraq and Afghanistan. He said when times were tough, he could slip his hand in his pocket, touch the rock, remember the strength that it brought, and go on one more day. Please hold on to your rocks and allow them to bring strength to you. Our seniors earned their rocks in the May commencement ceremony, um, and they should have them, and I hope they hold on to them and stay connected to us. Last but definitely not least, I get the pleasure of introducing our keynote speaker. Uh, a modest woman, she'd probably be annoyed that I'm going off script. She saw the script, she didn't see what's in my head right now. Um, this woman has had quite a year because she also graduated this year with a master's in leadership. She earned a national board certification this year. She was recognized by the Tennessee Performing Arts Center as Teacher of the Year for 2020 and is the Standing Renaissance High School Teacher of 2020, Ms. Joylyn Patton. I think I am going to have to move this microphone up a little bit. <laughs> Mr. Golden, members of the school board, Dr. Bass, Dr. Gupton, parents, faculty, and students of the class of 2020, we are here at a live graduation ceremony in July. I just am so happy. It is crazy to think that we haven't seen each other since March 5th. And I must say that it is very, very sweet to see everyone here today. I think it's also clear that this is a watershed moment. A watershed moment is one that has a clearly defined before and after. But for the class of 2020, two watershed moments have collided, COVID-19, and high school graduation. But this was not your first watershed moment, and it certainly won't be your last. For many of us, coming to Renaissance was itself a watershed moment. When I came to this school after being out of the classroom for 13 years, I was afraid that I wouldn't be a good teacher anymore, that I, and I was also afraid of being a leader. And like many of you, I had been wounded and hurt by a world that didn't understand me and people who had tried to make me into something I was not. You see, the river I was following dropped off into a waterfall and everything changed. And I had no idea what the waters would be like at the bottom of the falls or what Renaissance would hold. The river for you also changed unexpectedly and led to this very moment. Before Renaissance, we had given up on finding a place to belong and settled for just surviving. We doubted ourselves in every way imaginable and believed that we had nothing to offer the world. We wondered if school would ever be a safe place, a place to thrive, a place you would actually look forward to going. And when we stepped into the river on the first day, we were worried about drowning about starting over, and we wondered if we would be accepted. But within Renaissance, we have found something magical, and it's something that the speakers today have already touched on. At Renaissance, I was able to find myself again, to fall in love with teaching again, and to not be afraid to lead. I found gracious and kind people, teachers and students, who were amazingly supportive. You see, you have let me make mistakes and get it wrong. You didn't look at me funny when I asked a stupid question or told a bad joke. 
which was quite often. Um, and as students, you have found the same thing. Teachers who have walked with you and listened to you and supported you, and counselors and teachers who have cried with you and laughed with you. You have friends that have stood by you and new friends you never even thought you would have. You have shifted groups and changed hair color quite regularly. But now it's time to grow beyond the riverbanks of this magical river. It is time to see where the water is going to take you. Leaving this place signals the end of a beautiful season in our lives. It signals the end of the comfortable incubator that nurtured broken hearts and watered withered dreams. Chip Dodd says that the gift of sadness is that it values what we lost, and by leaving, we have lost this season. And by being sad, we show just how valuable it was. I also know that moving into the unknown is terrifying, and few classes have faced a greater unknown than the class of 2020. But I encourage you to remember back to a time when you first came to Renaissance High School your freshman year. You had the courage to step into the unknown of a new school. That fall, you also experienced one of the most divisive elections in our history and learned firsthand the importance of participating in our electoral system. I know you already have your voting cards. Your sophomore year, you watched a total solar eclipse, and you also tragically lost a classmate. Your junior year, we switched to Schoology and said goodbye to Fleenor and changed Innovation Lab. Wait, we pretty much changed Innovation Lab every year, I think. <laughs> this year, we tortured you with badges and opportunity tickets, and ultimately, you missed your entire last quarter of your senior year because of a global pandemic. And this summer, I know that you have been active and involved in protests and pet petitions working to create change. And all of these have been watershed moments that have changed our world some bigger than others. But when I look at you today, I see young people who have gained so much and grown so much in so many ways. And what I love about you is that you have not lost yourselves. You have become more of yourselves. You have grown after and in spite of all of these watershed moments. After your years at Renaissance, you are taller and stronger, and you know yourselves better. You have accomplished things that you never thought you would. You have learned how and when to speak up for yourselves. You have learned how to make new friends. You have learned how to forgive and move on. You have learned how to be yourself and how to give others the courage to be themselves. This is perhaps the greatest lesson you have taught me. Now, you get to bring everything you have learned into the next season with you. It will be terrifying, but you will not be lost. The lessons you have learned will go with you, and the world needs everything that you have learned. After our years at Wren, we know what it means to be patient with others. We know what it means to forgive mistakes, to have hard conversations. We carry that with us into a world that needs it so desperately. You see, we know what it feels like to be a part of a community, to be accepted for who you are, and to not be stuck in a box and labeled. Now we can give this gift to other people because it is a gift that we have received. After what happened this spring, we know how to do hard things and how to deal with loss and how to keep moving in spite of disappointments. We have adapted and figured out how to keep educating ourselves and to keep creating. And we know that we do not walk alone, that we are nothing without other people, and that we accomplish more together than working apart. We will keep doing this again, even when life gets harder. 
After this moment, you move into the next unknown season with all of yourselves, the good, the bad, your strengths, your weaknesses, the ups and the downs. And I hope that when you leave here today, your heart, like mine, is whole and full of gratitude. Heraclitus, a Greek philosopher, said, no man ever steps in the same river twice, for it's not the same river and he's not the same man. And as you step into the river of a new season, you are not what you were when you came to Renaissance. You are not hidden. You are not afraid, not bullied, not diminished, and not brokenhearted. When we come back to Ren, we will be different, but they will know us because we have been known and loved in this season. And when you return to Renaissance High School, it will not be the same, and you will not be the same. You cannot follow the rivers that you find if you do not leave this one behind. And this is the magic of the river of Renaissance, not that we all leave looking the same, but that we all leave being more of ourselves and who we were made to be. You were given a small rock that came from the Shoals Branch Riverbed, and I hope that you will carry this rock with you wherever you go as a reminder that for a time we followed the same river. It's a reminder that you were shaped and molded by this river and that you were a part of something bigger than yourselves. As for me, I will carry you in my heart. I carry your diversity with me. I carry your passion and your beauty. I carry your independence and your tenacity. I carry your stories with me and I carry you. This is our watershed moment. The beautiful thing about watershed moments is that they do not signal an end, they just signal a change. And your life and your story will go on. And no matter what happens, I want you to know that my greatest wish for you is that you will become more of yourself. That you will find your purpose in life, the thing that makes you come alive. And as you go, I want you to know that you helped me come alive every day because we didn't sit there and do nothing. You let me teach you, and that's what I was made to do. You let me learn from you, and those are lessons I will always treasure. One of my fondest memories is how you stood at my door anxiously looking at me and waiting for me to say the magic words so you could go on to your next class. So today, I leave you with these words so that you will not forget and that you can be free to step into your next adventure. Your words matter because you matter. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Excellent job. And now, the moment that you've been waiting for, the moment that brings us together today, the receiving of the diplomas. If the first section would please stand and come make your way to the end of the stage. Parents and relative and friends, uh, we want to remind you that every Every parent, want to hear, parent wants to hear their child's name called. I'm not going to tell you not to cheer or clap because I know you won't listen anyway, but just be mindful of the moment. This is being live streamed, and we don't want to miss the next, uh, next name being called, and uh, I know that you'll, you'll respect that. So thank you, in advance, thank you in advance for your cooperation. The Renaissance High Class of 2020, Nolan Robert Arthur. Sierra McKenzie Ball. Tegan Root Behan.
Hannah Grace Blunt. Caleb Jackson Clark. Isaac Calhoun Quarter. Hope Francis Dyson. Mark Robert Elston in absentia. Samuel David Emery. Christine Elise Fox. Valentina Garcia Hernandez in absentia. Lucas Geiger. Rihanna Marie Gibbs. Milo Elliot Gig. Jay Gilbert. Ryan Lee Hansen. Katina Leone Ingram. Claudia Grace Jenkins. Brynn Marie Jones. Emily Rose Lacey. Harley Madison. Eva Catherine Mayer in absentia. Liam Padrick McCreary. Catherine Alexandra Morcos. Stuart McDougal Nelson. Zachary Taylor Norris in absentia. Anna Catherine Perry. Casey Lynn Phillips. Fino Sunaksai Rejavong. Samantha Dean Reed. Sebastian Dana Rumball in absentia. Nicholas Heath Schmidt. (laughs) 
Elizabeth Ryan Sims. Meryl Barbara Smetana. Zachariah Duncan Sarabi Sade. Laurel Elizabeth Spencer Smith in absentia. Inslee Alexandra Stocker in absentia. Scholar Indigo Bray Strand. Good job. Macy Leanne Tomlin. Viviana Ambar Torres in absentia. Fiona Margaret Wascom. Heather Louise Winslow Potts. Will the class of 2020 please rise? <laughs> Graduates, at this time, please move your tassel to the left. <laughs> Parents, relatives, friends, and guests, as principal of Renaissance High School, I present to you the class of 2020. Guys, we believe in you, and we know that each one of you will go out and make a difference for good, and will represent the Wolfpack well. Congratulations, guys. Well done. <laughs>